Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Monday, January 10th, around 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. Whew, that's hard to remember. We got a great video coming up in about an hour on Rumble. The links will be in the community tab. But let's get to the frigid cold that's coming to the Northeast. That's the big story. Coldest air in three years coming to parts of the country. Wind chills as cold as 45 below. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now, we've been reporting on this channel for over half a decade, and 45 below is not cold. 55 below, 60 below zero as a wind chill is extremely cold. But in these parts of eastern Canada, they haven't really seen wind chills like this. And not only that, the northeast hasn't seen wind chills like this in years. An extreme cold weather warning issued for Montreal. Frostbite possible within 10 minutes. Extreme cold warning in effect for southern Quebec. Wind chills could reach minus 38C for Montreal, Laval, and parts of the South Shore. Holy macaroni. Bitter air. Cold blast. Coldest air in three years moves in for Tuesday. That's their lose day in Boston. That's a Boston boom. The coldest air in the region has seen in three years is moving in for Tuesday. Storm Team 5 meteorologist Harvey Leonard said 20 mile per hour gusts will drop the wind chills to 15 to 20 degrees below zero. And that resulted in, well, school closings. Is it really the wind chill that closed the schools? I wonder. Temperatures are expected to be quite cold with the wind chill. And so just to prioritize the safety of our students and um, especially given the staffing issues that we are seeing in schools and with our school bus drivers and students and um, especially given the staffing issues that we are seeing in schools and with our school bus drivers as well. Hmm. I wonder what the real problem is. Is it the cold? It's not that cold. Here's the model. And it's showing there's the cold. It's barely zero anywhere in New England, unless you're way up north here. And it's not going to remain. 10, 15 degrees as well. And then it's going to warm up slightly to almost right around the freezing level. It will be cold up in Montreal and Quebec here, especially Quebec and East Look at this, minus 33, and that's going to be for an extended period, probably about four or five days, and then another blast is coming in there. It's not getting warm for Canada anytime soon. Look at these, minus 40 numbers could be coming to Quebec and Ontario. Holy macaroni. So we're going to keep, keep a close eye on that, especially the third week of January here with this freeze, this cold, 25 coming to Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. You want to be well aware when this is happening for your pipes. Because you want to keep your, well, your pipes from bursting. So it's looking like quite a cold January. A January cold that we all remember from back in the day. Hey, hey. Now the official forecast says dangerous wind chills in the northeast. Heavy rain in Washington state. Frigid air will move over the northeast where it will be dangerously cold with wind chill temperatures. Minus 10, minus 20 potentially. Heavy rainfall may bring flooding and landslide risks to Washington across the Olympic Peninsula and northern Cascades through Wednesday. The northwest has been getting crushed with epic tides, record rain, and record snow. And that is definitely why they call it a rainforest. <laughs> Clearly, northern Cascades through Wednesday. Hey, hey, watch out. And freezing rain is possible east of the Cascades. Gusty winds may cause hazardous travel in Montana as well through Wednesday. So be well aware. And here we are looking at the GFS model. You can see there's a little bit of moderate snow is going to be moving through the northeast in the next day or so. Some snow moving down in northern Utah as well as western Montana. And then here is when the big picture changes. Take a look at that. So we're talking this weekend, starting Friday the 14th. Here's your Saturday. That storm system is going to move down through Iowa and bring much needed moisture to a dry hole that's been sitting there in Iowa. So Iowa, you could be getting six, seven, eight inches of snow in many regions, and as well as a southern storm that looks like it's tracking to be pretty epic in North Carolina, meaning central North Carolina. Um, and, and Virginia is going to be left out of it here. In fact, the whole D.C. area in the Delmarva looks to be a dry hole as usual here for this storm. And then another system will move up through the Virginia spine here by uh, Tuesday. So the weekend, next weekend should be pretty epic in the southeast for a snowstorm that could affect large swaths of North Georgia, uh, northern South Carolina, and a huge area in North Carolina. So heads up there for the warning next weekend.
could be the blizzard of the century. No, not really. But it could be a significant event for North Carolina, to say the least. Now, let's get to some of the fun stuff. Take a look at the flooding there. Homes underwater, sea level on steroids, record tides, flood Washington coastlines. Or are they record tides? Some of the highest tides ever recorded. Well, they just gave themselves away there. Some of the highest tides ever recorded hit Seattle, much of the Washington coast during the first week of January 22. But in fact, they weren't all of the highest tides. Friday morning tide in Seattle appears to be the highest in more than a century of record keeping, though the tidal gauge at Cloman Dock blinked out for half an hour as Elliott Bay swelled past 14.47 feet, its highest elevation in 40 years. So they have no idea. They're just making it up to scare you as if it has something to do with sea level change when it has everything to do with tidal change. And so don't let them wrangle you into that one. Now, here's an interesting fact. Horned helmets predate the Vikings by 3,000 years. Yeah. Everyone thinks the horned helmets are from the Vikings, but in fact, they come from the Bronze Age. And they come potentially from Europe. Yes. And there is a 4,000-year-old Bronze Age helmet from 2000 BC. Absolutely amazing. Um, and we have other evidence of effigies from Anatolia and Sardinia that show horns from 3,500 years before present. So the horns were obviously associated with Baal and the worship of Baal in the bull, or perhaps Taurus, the constellation. But it comes from a very ancient lineage here. You see bird heads on these horns. Absolutely fantastic. Almost like the bird head effigy we see in our petroglyphs, the Ajiji. So this is all part of the hidden history that is being, we're being lied about. The Vikings are the descendants of these people, which I believe are the Atlanteans, which built most of the modern world or had the information to get it built. And this information has been erased from you. But new archaeological evidence suggesting that this Bronze Age helmet is 4,000 years old, which is quite fantastic. Yes, there is really diamond rain on Uranus and Neptune. Nope, there isn't. And if you watch the video or you read any of this, you're going to find out that it's 100% fairy tale and speculation, especially <laughs> this particular video on YouTube, which I left a few comments on. And in fact, it is through the combination of mathematical modeling and laboratory experiments that we realized Uranus and Neptune might have so-called diamond rain. So it's not based on anything that they directly observe on the planets whatsoever, which is not science. That's called fairy tale nonsense, by the way. You want to know something about a real diamond? Well, not only is he speaking to you, but a rare, mysterious diamond was found in 1928 in West Virginia, the third largest diamond in North America, almost an inch in diameter. It was found while they were playing horseshoes on the side of a creek. Diamonds do not exist anywhere near West Virginia. Closest place is uh, maybe Murfreesboro in Arkansas. This one is nothing like those diamonds. So that's quite interesting. 1928, the largest, third largest diamond in North America was found by accident. And it's called an alluvial diamond. It was either brought there by a river but it, or dropped there by a native. Maybe the Clovis people. What were they doing with diamonds? That's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. We have an amazing, enlightening video about the state of current affairs over at Rumble in about an hour. Things I can't talk about here because we will be banned immediately. And I think you might want to hear about them. As soon as the video is up, we'll post it as the first comment below this video. We'll also post it on Magnetic Reversal News and Oppenheimer Ranch in the community tab. Once again, we love each and every one of you. Be safe. That's Bill. Mm -hmm.